Kurama was essentially the mascot of the Naruto series, so the fact that they killed him off sorta of sucks. I mean, it really sucks. Our friend, the Ninetales, was a major plot device all through part 1 and part 2, and I suppose his demise was meant to mark the official end of Naruto's era. But he also helped Naruto, Sasuke, Kawaki, and Boruto to stop Ishiki. It also gave us a glimpse of Baryon mode, which we had never seen before and will never see again. After all this, I can't help but wonder, what if Kurama hadn't died? Specifically, what would have happened if Naruto hadn't used Baryon mode? It's obvious that this was the thing that killed Kurama. If it had been used fast enough, Kurama might have survived, but it took too long and completely burned through all of his chakra. I still wonder if he can come back from this. After all, chakra is energy, and energy is never truly destroyed. It only transforms, and tailed beasts are known to respawn after death, such as how Isobu did, but I guess that's a question for another day. Today we ask, what if Kurama didn't die? Welcome to the Amagi. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Amagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. Kurama was created by Hagoromo, using about 11% of the Ten Tails' full power. I mean, give or take, and that's only if we don't count the energy left over in the Ghetto Statue, or the fact that the other tailed beasts might have different portions of chakra. Maybe it's just better to say that he is one ninth of the Ten Tails' power. After Hagoromo and Hamada's battle against their mother, Hagoromo took the Ten Tails into himself, and when he was on his deathbed, created nine beasts from the chakra. Among these beasts was Kurama, our favorite deep-voiced furry little cuddle monster. Kurama was sent to live in a temple in a forest for a while, where he gained a reputation as a force of nature that struck out at areas where the darkest things imaginable in the human heart would fester. It was around the era when the shinobi nations were forming as an institution that humans got the bright idea to use him as a weapon. Being as massive as he was, and how much chakra he had, they knew that if they could control him, they could destroy anyone. The Gold and Silver Brothers attempted to capture Kurama, but, you know, he ate them and in retaliation, they ate him too. They survived by eating the inside of Kurama's stomach for two weeks. This caused him to puke them back up and turned the Gold and Silver Brothers into pseudo Jinchuriki, as they had taken quite a bit of Tailed Beast Chakra without actually becoming host to one. He continued to roam free all throughout the Warring States period, until the founding of the Hidden Leaf Village. At that time, Madara Uchiha, having lost faith in his village, decided he would destroy it and reform it the way it needed to be, and to that end, he forced a contract on Kurama, and maintained control of the Tailed Beast using his Sharingan. He used Kurama as a weapon with which to fight the first Hokage, Hashirama Senju. Eventually, Hashirama managed to kill Madara, with some allowance for takesy backsies due to Izanagi, which severed the tie between Madara and Kurama. However, this was not the end of the suffering for our favorite Fuzzy, as he was then unwillingly sealed by Hashirama Senju into his wife, Mito Uzumaki, who then became his first Jinchuriki. Mito had to deal with Kurama for the rest of her life, and when speaking to Kushina Uzumaki, her successor about the Tailed Beast, mentioned that Kushina would need to be full of love to counter the hatred of the Ninetales. It only makes sense that Kurama should be so full of hatred though, after all, he had been subject to witnessing the worst of humanity for his entire life, trying to destroy that evil only to later become a slave to those who were either evil or possessed with great ambition. He was later passed to Kushina Uzumaki at the death of Mito, who managed to cope with the hatred of the tailed beast through the love of her husband, Minato. However, after experience with Mito, it now became known that when a woman, who was the Jinchuriki of the Ninetales, is pregnant and is in the middle of giving birth, the seal that keeps the Ninetailed in grows weak, which can allow it to escape if proper care is not taken. However, during birth, this was the moment at a masked man who sought the power of Kurama attacked. Taking Kushina when her seal was weakest, he pulled the tailed beast out, which would later result in her death. Casting a Genjutsu over it with his Sharingan, much like Madara had, he used it to decimate the Hidden Leaf. However, upon defeat by Minato, Kurama was freed from his Genjutsu and instead began to attack of its own volition, in an effort to keep itself from being sealed up again. It put a claw through both the fourth Okage and its former Jinchuriki, but stopped short of killing Naruto, which gave Minato enough time to finish his Reaper Death Seal. The seal split Kurama's massive chakra in half, and sealed half into Minato, who was taken to the grave by this technique. 
The other half was put into Naruto. However, after the attack on the village, all those within hated Kurama, and by extension, it's Jinchuriki, who oftentimes was seen as the same person. From here on, Kurama was mostly silent, as Naruto didn't even know Kurama was there until he was told later by Mizuki. Later, Kurama's power is finally used by Naruto during the Land of Waves arc, in which, upon seeing Sasuke's body laying supposedly lifeless, Naruto's rage and sorrow pulls the energy up and allows him to effortlessly break through Haku's demonic mirroring ice crystals technique and defeat him, although the energy is pacified as soon as Naruto recognizes Haku. Kurama's power next appeared when Naruto was facing off against Orochimaru in the Forest of Death. Naruto's power was pacified by Orochimaru who placed the five element seal on top of Naruto's pre-existing seal to further cut off the power. This extra seal would later be removed by Jiraiya who would attempt to teach Naruto how to use this power correctly. In an attempt to help Naruto gain the power to make use of Kurama's power, Jiraiya pushed Naruto off a cliff. That's Godfathers for ya. As he was falling, Naruto entered his subconscious and met Kurama for the first time. There, they got off to a rocky start as Kurama declared his desire to eat Naruto, but Naruto regained his composure and demanded some of Kurama's chakra as a form of rent for staying in his body. Kurama complied as it was better than the alternative of death. Come to think of it though, if Kurama had let Naruto die here, yeah, Kurama would have died, but he would have reconstituted himself later, which would mean that Kurama would reform free from a seal. But I guess even tailed beasts are afraid to die, so he complied. He also came to believe that he could manipulate Naruto into using more power, which would slowly weaken the seal placed on him. The next time Kurama acts is when Naruto is facing Neji Hyuga, who has just hit him with the gentle fist technique. Kurama gave him some chakra, no muss, no fuss. Naruto also used this power to bring down Gara, who had essentially crashed the Chunin exams after his loss as Orochimaru did the same. Naruto also tried to use his power when searching for Tsunade to replace Hiruzen after the latter's death. He attempted to use it to defend himself from Itachi Uchiha and Kisame Hoshigaki. However, this was moot as Kisame absorbed this chakra with Samehara. Later, when facing off against Kabuto, Naruto's heart muscles were severed. Kurama, sensing Naruto's need, attempted to use its chakra to heal him, but his chakra system was also severed, which meant that the chakra couldn't help. Kurama sensed its own chakra slipping away as things grew dark, but thanks to Tsunade's medical ninjutsu, both were saved. When Naruto and Sasuke clashed at the Valley of the End, it became apparent that Sasuke was ready and willing to kill Naruto when he stabbed him through the shoulder. Kurama instantly healed him and put him into version 1 Jinchuriki form, which was enough to overwhelm Sasuke with its speed until Sasuke managed to keep up with his fully matured Sharingan. During the time between this and the start of Shippuden, Naruto trains with Jiraiya to master the use of Kurama's chakra, which allows him to access the second version of his Jinchuriki form, but upon achieving it, he loses control, goes berserk, and nearly kills Jiraiya. From here, Naruto is not known to have used version 2 except when he learned that Gara had died, in which he achieves the form out of sorrow. This doesn't last long though as Kakashi puts the seal on Naruto's forehead, which stops him from going too far. During the Tenshi Bridge Recon mission, Naruto utilized version 2 to fight Orochimaru, but losing control of it, he hurt not only himself but also Sakura. She didn't want to tell Naruto, but Yamato did, and so those beans were spilled in a flat jiffy. Naruto swore off the form for good. Later on in the same arc, when faced with Sasuke who had not been seen for almost three years, Kurama poked at Naruto to use more of its chakra, but Naruto refused. Kurama insults and further tempts Naruto, but before their little squabble can escalate, Sasuke shows up in Naruto's mind to spoil the party. Kurama is impressed by Sasuke's abilities and likens him to Madara. Maybe Kurama was onto something. He later warns Sasuke not to kill Naruto or he would regret it. During his training to learn Rasen Shuriken, Naruto's frustration boils to the surface, which Yamato has to suppress. But that is nothing compared to what happened during his fight with Pain. When Hinata Hyuga is seemingly killed, Naruto in a rage flies into his six-tailed form, which only gets worse when Pain puts Naruto into a Chibaku Tensei, which Naruto escapes by entering his eight-tailed form. Before Kurama could completely come out, Minato's spirit appeared and reinforced the seal for Naruto. At around the time that the 4th Shinobi World War was coming, Naruto was given the key to his seal by the Great Toad Sage and told to prepare for a fated battle with Sasuke. He was told to find a way to control Kurama's power. This leads Naruto to an island in the Land of Lightning where he finds Killer B and proceeds to train with him to control his power as a Jinchuriki. After a short conversation with Kurama, Naruto opens the seal and lets Kurama out where they proceed to fight. With the help of Killer B, as well as from Kushina Uzumaki, whose spirit appeared to help him, Naruto managed to strip a good deal of chakra from Kurama before resealing him. This granted Naruto access to his chakra cloak. 
However, this also allowed him to sense the war raging in the distant lands. Naruto rushed off to join in, all the while Kurama berates him for wasting his chakra, saying there's no way that Naruto can stop the war all by himself. He's attempting to shoulder the world's hatred, and he has only just now figured out how to deal with his own. And he had also failed to deal with Sasuke's hatred, or even Kurama's. What could Naruto do? Naruto, however, pressed forward, promising to resolve all of it, including Kurama's hatred. When Madara attempted to summon Kurama, Madara realized he could not. Kurama, however, had still heard the call and was set on edge by it. This prompted him to give Naruto with more power. Lesser of two evils, right? While Killer B and Naruto were fighting against Tobi, Kurama pretended to sleep so that Naruto could take as much chakra as he needed without cost to aid Naruto. Kurama at this point, open to Naruto, began to believe that Naruto was a one-of-a-kind human and was the only good human he had ever met. He also listened into Naruto's conversation with the other tailed beasts, being a bit annoyed during Naruto's conversation with Son Goku when his name was revealed to him. Kurama thought back on Naruto's life and told him that he of all people should know that actions speak louder than words, and that only through action could Naruto reach the other tailed beasts. Naruto knew, and he thanked Kurama, not just for his observation, but also for everything else, for lending him his power as well. Kurama was touched by this, and he offered to meld their chakras together. Naruto accepted, and the two melded their chakras, allowing Naruto access to a new form. Naruto used this power to keep Kakashi and Might Guy safe from the other tailed beasts. Given this was their first time transforming, Kurama warned that they only had five minutes. He allowed Naruto even deeper into his subconscious, where he could meet the other tailed beasts, and they all speculated that Naruto might be the promised individual that the Sage of Six Paths spoke of. After this though, the other tailed beasts were sealed into the Ten Tails, and using the Gold and Silver Brothers, Tobi managed to revive the Ten Tails. However, Kurama and Naruto fought against the Ten Tails together. Madara then enters the fray with his Wood Dragon technique that he stole from Hashirama. Seeing that Kakashi was weak, Kurama bestowed some of its own chakra to Kakashi and then threw him into Obito's Kamui dimension. From there, when Obito tried to phase, he would receive damage because Kakashi would be attacking him every time he entered that dimension. Together with Gyuki and B, Naruto and Kurama face off against Obito, but it's all in vain because the Ten Tails is still revived. Gyuki and Kurama teamed up against the Ten Tails, but they were utterly outclassed by the massive creature. After falling out of tailed beast mode from exhaustion, Naruto seems to lose hope, but Kurama picks him up and verbally slaps him in the back of the head, echoing the sentiments that Hinata had said earlier about Naruto's life not being his own. With this, Naruto returns to his Tailed Beast mode, and produces Shadow Clones to distribute his Tailed Beast Chakra to all the other shinobi. Kurama warned Naruto that the Ten Tails was still maturing and to be aware of its upcoming attack, Tenpenchi. The attack injures Naruto and causes him to lose all of the chakra he had built up. Naruto asks for more chakra, but Kurama says he needs to remain in base until he can enter his Tailed Beast mode. It's at this time that the previous Hokage arrive, each reincarnated and technically undead. Kurama is startled by Minato's use of Kurama's energy, but knows that it is merely a testament to the skill Kurama already knew Minato had. Together with his father, Naruto and Minato bump fists and get ready to unleash their strategy to deal with the Ten Tails and its new Jinchuriki. Yin Kurama says it's odd to hear it ask itself for chakra. They know that only Sage techniques will work against the Ten Tails Jinchuriki, and so Kurama asks Naruto to use Sage mode, which it initially hated. Father and son, both shrouded in tailed beast chakra cloaks, strike Ten Tails Jinchuriki Obito with a Rasengan. Naruto and Kurama are later joined by Sasuke, who adds his Susanoo to the mix, allowing them to even better fight Obito and further wound him. Using all of the allied shinobi forces at once, Naruto and Kurama remove the other tailed beasts from Obito. After a quick talk no jutsu with Obito, Obito decides to use the Samsara of Heavenly Life technique to bring those killed in the war back to life but Black Zetsu interferes and causes Obito to revive Madara by accident, who also proceeds to solo the allied shinobi forces blind because, you know, he's a badass. And once he retrieves one of his Rinnegan, he begins to use it to pull out all of the tailed beasts from 1 to 9. This includes Kurama, which leads Naruto on the verge of death. Minato, however, transfers his half of Kurama to Naruto. They later attend a meeting with the Sage of Six Paths, who offers Naruto his power and grants him access to Six Paths Sage Mode. Together, Naruto and Yin Kurama fight against Madara Uchiha. Madara, however, has his ambitions cut short by Black Zetsu, who takes over and manifests the will of Kaguya Otsutsuki into him, essentially transforming him into her. After striking her, Kurama's energy resonates with that of the other tailed beasts, and they attempt to escape from Kaguya as she is later sealed away. 
After this though, Naruto and Sasuke proceed to fight, as Sasuke had planned to eliminate all Kage and all tailed beasts to fulfill his revolution and change the world. However, Naruto and Kurama fight against him, and it ends in a stalemate where both are exhausted and lose their dominant arms. Yang and Yin Kurama then unite once more inside of Naruto. Many years pass, and Naruto is on the moon facing off against Toneryo Tsutsuki, attempting to save both the world and Hinata. Kurama is seen fighting against the massive animated stone golem, which he manages to defeat. The defeat of this golem unintentionally nearly kills Taneri, though Naruto saves him. Naruto then commissions Kurama to spell mission complete on the surface of the moon so that the Kage could see it. Kurama notes that he sucks at calligraphy. Years later, Naruto is the Hokage. However, the threat of the Otsutsuki has not come to an end. Naruto and Kurama are once again called to fight, and alongside Sasuke, they manage to fend off the Otsutsuki, and with Boruto's help, manage to kill the enemy. The next time Kurama really appears is during the Kawaki arc, which happens to be the last arc where Kurama appears. In this arc, Kurama is shown to stand guard over Naruto's body as he sleeps, and further warns Kawaki. The two share a quick conversation about Naruto and his past, which moves him. Kurama then tells Kawaki to go back to sleep. Jigen, really Ishiki Otsutsuki, then uses Kawaki's karma seal to hunt down Kawaki, and teleports straight into Naruto's home and subdues Naruto with chakra draining rods. Kurama chastised Naruto in shaming the Hokage title. Naruto then achieved Six Path Sage Mode, but was teleported by Jigen to another dimension where he planned to strand him. He was, however, saved by Sasuke. Naruto and Sasuke were later saved by Boruto and Kawaki. Naruto is taken to the hospital for treatment and he makes a swift recovery. Naruto then follows Boruto to an alternate dimension where he aids in fighting him with his son, Kawaki, the target of Ishiki, and Sasuke. However, Ishiki still has the edge and Naruto is losing. Here is where Kurama knows that the only choice is to use Baryon Mode. This is where Kurama sacrifices his life for Naruto. Using Baryon Mode, Naruto manages to shorten Ishiki's lifespan from 3 days to a few minutes. This causes Ishiki to time out and die. Naruto believes that this will kill him, but he was misled by Kurama. The only person dying is the fox. But what if Kurama had not done this? What if Baryon Mode was not something Kurama had thought to use? What if it didn't even exist as a possibility in his mind? What would have happened here? Well, all things being said, Naruto more than likely could not have beaten Ishiki without it. Because after all, Naruto still only won because Ishiki timed out. If Ishiki had no time limit, Naruto would have been killed, so more than likely Naruto would die. Kurama would likely be stolen by Ishiki and Kawaki would end up the vessel for him, ensuring his resurrection. Sasuke would probably try damage control and send Boruto away and attempt to fight Ishiki himself, but he would probably also be killed. Ishiki would likely head back to Earth where he would look for Boruto. He needs an Otsutsuki sacrifice and Boruto by this time is pure enough due to his karma seal to count as one. So Ishiki would likely search for Boruto, and upon finding it would use him as a sacrifice to awaken his own tentails, which he more than likely would use to cultivate a god tree on earth, which would then lead to everyone on the surface becoming fuel for the tree. Ishiki would likely take the chakra fruit back to the main branch, just as he was supposed to from the start before Kaguya's interference. Everything being said, if Kurama had not used Baryon mode, the earth would have ended. However, if we take into account the idea that through the use of Baryon mode, Naruto somehow managed to finish Ishiki early, Kurama may have survived it. So what would have happened then? Likely, the ending of the Kawaki arc would be the same. Most of the Code arc would remain the same up to the point of Boruto, Kawaki, and Code's battle. Normally, Momoshiki would take control of Boruto in an attempt to destroy Code and Kawaki, but Naruto in this has the ability to deal with it. Able to use more than just Sage Mode, Naruto would likely use Six Paths Sage Mode, and would probably be able to make quick work of Code, and would likely also be able to pacify Boruto without killing him. This would probably lead to greater effects, because currently, Momoshiki can never revive, because he needed to give up the last few percentages of his DNA to save his vessel's life. Here, he doesn't have to, which means soon enough, Boruto would transform into Momoshiki Revived, and Boruto's personality would be erased forever. Boruto kinda has a trash personality, so that's not much of a loss for me. I jest, I jest, stop looking at me like that. Momoshiki would likely return and would continue his plans to revive the Tentails. He would then hijack Ishiki's Tentails and would use Kawaki as a sacrifice and revive the Tentails. Momoshiki would absorb it and would be able to destroy Naruto, Sasuke, and everyone else. You see, the issue is the loss of Kurama was needed. 
Kurama needed to use Baryon mode to kill Ishiki and had no chance without it. This would kill Kurama, and if Kurama didn't die, a lot might change. We all know Naruto didn't let Boruto get killed of his own volition, and if he still had Kurama with him, he would more than likely attempt to stop it. If he does, he's screwed because Momoshiki would come back to life and would more than likely be able to revive the Ten Tails, and that would be the end of the world. It's sad, but there really was no other way. Of course, the loss of the Rinnegan for Sasuke, that was useless. Kurama's death was not. Sad, but needed. What do you think would have happened though? What might have changed if Kurama had not died? I'm interested to hear what you think. Feel free to drop a comment below and tell us. Like the video and subscribe if you haven't already, and ring that bell to be notified when new content drops. Peace out.